Day two, butt joint. We still got butt joints on the ceiling. Just take the edge of your knife and clean that junk off. All right. Now we're good to go. So this is the same process. You're just gonna fill down one side. Get a good pack of mud. If you collect your mud and put it on your hawk so you don't have much at the top and bottom, it shouldn't land all over your face when you're working upside down like this. Okay. Now we wanna clean by putting that pressure. You see the ridge is too close. There we go. Clean with the pressure on the outside over here. And then one down the middle on the paper. And leave those lines there. That tells us where it is that we filled to and what we have to fill afterwards, okay? Same thing coming the other way. So in drywall, less is more. The goal is not to put on so much mud and then sand for 14 days to get it all nice and smooth. The goal is to imply the mud smooth and then just sand to change the texture of the surface. That's it. All right, so here we go. We've got that all set up. Less is more. If we put too much on there, then we've got to take it all back off again. That's just a waste of time. Once you have all your butt joints done, if you still have any mud left, you can take care of all your inside corners. All right, just a real quick look. Take your four-inch knife, run your corner with it real quick. Make sure that you don't have any big chunks of mud that are in your way. Again, a little bit of mud. I like to go with the left side of the corner first because I'm right-handed, it just makes sense to me. And I'm just gonna go and put more mud than I need. Okay. This is one application where you don't wanna use the side of your knife because you wanna set up mud going from zero to cover over that four inches. Keep your tools clean as you go, you won't wear it. All right. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna use pressure on this knife like this. So I'm cleaning this mud as tight as I can and leaving the ridge. Now you see I'm going to change direction because when you're doing finished work, you always come towards your finished work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trough out the inside corner with my knife. Then when I put my pressure on, it'll fill it up and finish flat without any excess. You see that? I'm not making the other side of that corner dirty. As soon as I see a little extra excess mud, I'll take it out, hit the trough again, clean my knife. I'll start coming from the other direction this time. Always finishing to finishing to finish mud. Second, second day, first coat on your inside corners. Only do one side. There's a tool on the market, and we should talk about this. Is it got a handle and it's got this little V-notch on it, and it's designed you put a bunch of mud in the corner and you track it down. And it's supposed to clean all the excess mud out of your way, but it leaves way too much mud in the corner and the corner isn't sharp. You want a 90 degree corner. So use a tool with 90 degrees. Those are really rounded. And then when you come back in to sand that, you're always gonna sand too much out of the corner. You end up with these deep, great big deep grooves in your drywall, it looks like hell. So we saw on day one, we like to install all of our paper corner beads and all of our bulkheads, anywhere where there's no meat in the back of there, right? So no wood. But on day two, I like to put all my metal corner beads on and maybe the camera can pick this up. But you'll see that it's, 90 degrees, maybe even open a little bit more than 90 degrees. What I prefer to do, take two seconds, pinch that together, more of an 85, okay? And the reason is when I screw this on, I want the outside corner of that bead to be sticking out in both directions. I don't want it flat. I know these are made for really quick installation. There's a tool on the market for the professional drywall installers. They put the corner bead on and they just slam this hammer device over top of it and it breaks the metal, grabs the drywall, and they're good to go. But if you're working in your home and you like a nice joint, then this is the way to put it on. We're gonna push it up to the ceiling. Now, Max, maybe with the camera you can see this. Now I've got a gap here, and I've got a gap here to fill, all right? So when you do an outside corner bead, you're gonna have a pretty significant gap, and that's a good thing. And because we bent the metal and created a nice gap, we can use drywall screws. Again, there is a 
blue ring drywall nail on the market. And it's a nice little nail and you can hammer them in. It's a thin metal, it comes with a flat head and you can pound them in and it does a great job. But I would rather have to push that, get a good grab. Then I don't have to rely on adhesives or something mechanical that busts through the metal into the drywall. It's a little old fashioned, but I get to sleep at night. And you don't have to put a screw in every single hole. Every 16 to 24 inches is plenty, as long as you have a nice tight corner, and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 45 minute mud here now. We're gonna fill this metal corner, and we're gonna go to all of our paper beads and fill those as well. Day two is outside corner day, and I'm just using the side of my trowel and loading it on, okay? And that's it, folks. Coming back and taking it off. I'm just setting my knife about three inches from the inside corner there. I don't want to take out any mud that's not necessary out of that inside corner. That's a fresh corner. All right. Not using pressure on this knife because I don't want to groove it out. Just want to clean it up. I made a mess on my inside corner, so I'm going to go back and fix that right away. Okay, so this is going to be a door frame. Really important when you're working around door frames. You don't add a thickness to the wall next to where your door jam goes, okay? So you don't want to just have this huge pile of mud sitting there like that, all right? That's going to cause you a whole world of hurt when it goes to do finishing trim. You want to clean as tight as you can from that drywall to the outside of that corner. So put your knife on there, use some pressure. We got our 45 minute mud on our hawk. It's probably talking and moving a little faster as it dries, but you want to just take your knife, double check that everything is cleaned up before you get started. Fill it and just, I'm kind of doing like a rolling. I'm starting like that and I'm rolling it off, okay? Just so that I leave the mud on the wall. That's just easier. And then you can come back with a bit of better pressure, okay? And I don't need this to be perfect. I just need it not to be bumpy. I don't want anything sticking out further than what I'm going to have as a finish because we're going to come back in about a half an hour and put another coat on it. Now, when you're doing underneath, Again, start from the outside, roll it off at the corners. When you come to one of these outside corners, come at it from the angle so you're finishing on both metals at the same time, okay? That'll set the depth of the mud real nice. And then when you're ready to clean it off, you can come at it this way, ease off on the pressure, come at it this way, ease off on the pressure, and then come out from the back side. All right. You're going to see these ridges. They're not your enemy. You can clean them up a little bit, but leave the ridges there. Something like that. Okay, so we're still working on our second coat. So I like to work through my room clockwise because I'm right-handed. That way I'm always finishing towards my finished mud. So I did my outside corner. I've done my inside corner. Now we're gonna do a horizontal joints. This is day two, and this is a fill coat day. What we're looking at is we're looking at throwing a lot of mud on the wall to fill the coat from here to here, and then maybe just stretch it out just a hair. Make sure that it's all nice and level. So when you're doing that, you wanna put pressure on the bottom on a bit of an angle here, so you're not pouring mud all over the floor, okay? Clean off all the excess, and then with a little bit of pressure, top and bottom nice and even, fill it all in. That's it. We don't want to see this on second coat. I don't want to see that. If you can't see the tape, you've used too much mud. All right? The mud is somewhat translucent. When you do it properly, you should be able to see your tape through the mud, okay? You want to see the definition of the tapered joint, and you want to know that you've just filled what's necessary, and that's it, and you've taken the rest of that mud off the wall. Second opportunity to hit the screw holes. Okay, 
Never let an opportunity go by to hit the screw holes. It gives you an opportunity, A, to make sure that they're all sunk. You don't have the head sticking out. And, oh. We have a ridge. Need to investigate. Okay. So somewhere during construction here, that screw hole missed the mark. And it's getting filled. When that happens, don't just cover it up with mud and cover it up with mud and then sand it bump smooth. Dent it with your handle. Fill that hole with mud. All right, same with this. This is a bit of a mess, okay? Add mud, add paper, clean it out. Here's the crazy part. Now, this patch is back to first coat. And this is ultimately the problem. So the way we fix this is tomorrow when we come, when this is dry, we'll actually hit this with some 45 minute mud and then we'll do a finish coat over top. That way the whole job's finished together. All right, so the only thing left to do on second coat is to hit your outside corners with your finished mud. And here's how you do. Oh, stick your finger in it. If it makes a hole, it's not dry. Leave it alone until it's dry and we'll do this in a few minutes. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos. By all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.